Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt. It's from a pattern designed by me and my sister designs called Wild Jelly Rolls. So there's two quilts you can make from this pattern. Wild Jelly Rolls 4 and Wild Jelly Rolls 3. Number 3 is what we're going to make today. So of course it takes a jelly roll. It takes 40 strips. And that's great because most jelly rolls have 40 or 42. So we're going to use this one that's full of batiks from Hoffman and it's called Summer. The only other thing we need is a background. So I've picked out this nice clear yellow batik for the background. That should make a great looking quilt. The first step is to get the jelly roll strips out because we need to make some sub cuts. Now you'll notice that some of the strips are the same color as our background. And that happens a lot of times when you're using a pre-cut and you picked a background that would look nice with all of your strips. It's either the same color, or in this case, it's the exact same fabric that's in your pre-cut. It's a very easy fix. All I'm going to do is take those three out and cut a couple of extra strips from this fabric. Now I selected this for my binding, and so all I have to do is buy a little bit extra, about a quarter yard extra, and cut three strips, and I'll sub those in, and then all the patchwork will look good against my background. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get the cutting done on all the jelly roll strips. And I can't give you the sizes because it's not my pattern, but me and my sister's designs, they're very clear with all their instructions, so you can easily cut all your pieces. You'll see that every jelly roll strip is cut the same. And we got four of that size, we're going to keep them together and then four of this size. And we'll keep those together. And I'm gonna go ahead and sort all of these out for all the pieces. Now that these are all separated, our next step is just to cut up a little bit of the background. Everything is all cut. To make the first block, what we need is four of these longer rectangles and then we need four squares in a contrasting color. That one would look nice. Then we need four background squares. Let's mark the back of all of these squares. So I like to use just a pencil. I like to make a light pencil line along the back side here. So I'm just going to go from corner to corner, draw a light line. I'm here at the machine with all the pieces, and this is how we're going to lay them out. Each one of these rectangles gets a background square. So two of them we're gonna put facing like this, with that line this way. The next two, they're going to be oriented the opposite way. The contrast here, it's going the same way as the background square, the line on it. And then these two go, again, the same way as the background. So all I have to do now is stitch right along these drawn lines. So I'll make sure everything is straight, stitch right down that line. Then the second line. The two that are stitched like this, I'm going to iron all of these squares away from the middle. So this one's gonna get folded toward the edge. And this one's going to get folded toward the edge. Same thing with the matching one. Now these two that are stitched the other way, we want to fold the excess underneath there. So I'm folding that underneath there. And this side, it's also getting folded underneath there. It's getting folded toward the middle. 
Same thing on that second pair. And the reason we are putting these extra parts in opposite directions is because when we go to make the block later, this is helping us create less bulk. All we have to do next is trim off these extra parts. So I'm just trimming the excess so that I've got a quarter inch left there. You don't even need to be horribly accurate. That's why I just use the scissors and eye it up. So these get trimmed here. And then the last two pieces, they have all the excess toward the outside. So I'm just taking the bottom two layers, leaving a quarter inch. To make the block from these four pieces, all we have to do is flip them over. And this is what we're gonna do. These two pieces like that, this makes exactly the same thing but we're gonna spin it around so we have this nice diamond in the middle. So I'm just going to put them right sides together and stitch down here first. Now, because we ironed in opposite directions, you can see our seam allowances are going different directions and this all nests, it all nests together and it's very easy to line it up and it's not thick, it's very flat. That one there, same thing here. The, again, they're going in opposite directions so we can match everything up easily. Now we're gonna finger press this seam to the right and the opposite seam up here in the opposite direction. And now Everything along here is all nesting and going in opposite directions. So it's super easy to get all those intersections just about perfect. This gets finger pressed to the right, and I'm gonna make every single block pressed exactly like this. So look at that, we've got that nice square in the middle, good seam allowances, everything matched up. So all I need to do next is finish up the rest of the blocks. All of those are done, and you can see we used up all of those pieces that were on the table here. The only thing that's left are these various sizes of backgrounds. And those are going to be filled in around the patchwork here when we lay out the quilt. And that's actually what we're going to do next. I'm going to start with all of the patchwork blocks and then I'm gonna put this in at the very end. So I'm starting in the left corner here. So we've got a piece like this, and a piece like this, and we're just gonna go kind of stair-step fashion here. And I'm not doing this from memory. I've got the pattern to tell me exactly what goes where. And let's see what we end up with here. So you can see that I've laid out four sections, kind of four quadrants of the quilt, because that's how we're going to put it together. Then we're going to add a row in the middle, going across the quilt, and this will be put in after we make those four quadrants, and a row going down like this. So it looks pretty complex right now, but it's not going to be that difficult to stitch together. And these pieces here, that's how we're going to fill in all these empty spots. We've got a big rectangle there. We've got a couple squares that go here and here. Longer rectangle here and here. And then the very longest rectangles will go here and here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take this first quadrant here and stitch everything together. And it's pretty easy. You start with this and that fits right on it. Once you've got those two sewn together, this piece will be exactly that size. Once that's on, we'll put this on here. That will fit exactly on. So we're just gonna keep adding things on and building 
till we get that first quadrant done. I've got all four corners stitched together. The sewing is really quite easy. It looks complicated, but when I put all these together, I actually didn't even check to see if these corners all matched. I just sewed and hoped they matched, and they do. That's how easy it was to put together. Now that we've got these quadrants done, all we have to do is add those middle rows. So there's a, there's a piece that goes on the end of each. A bigger piece here, a little piece on the end of these two rows. Then I'm gonna sew the top, the middle, the bottom, get it onto the quilting machine. I've got the quilt all loaded up and we need to pick a thread color. I'm concerned that these dark colors will show up too much and take away from the patchwork. But let's see what they look like. So this would be interesting. It's a nice, vibrant green. It's really going to show in that light areas. So it's a possibility. Orange, same thing, a little bit softer, and it's gonna blend with the pink and the green. Now this one, it's not really a color that's in here much, but it doesn't show at all in the yellow, and it just blends right into all the dark colors too. This is kind of a lime green. Again, not a color that's in it much, doesn't show. So yellow, of course, would have been my first choice. There's a bright yellow, and then we've got a soft yellow. I don't think it makes any difference. Neither one is gonna show much. I think I'll go with the soft yellow. I'm going to use a pattern called cockatiel feathers. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. That's what it's gonna be on the whole quilt. So if we take it down and just look at one block, you get a better idea of what the pattern looks like. Oops, that's still two blocks. There we go. It's very traditional, very, very nice quilting pattern. Th these swirls, and feathers, that's used on so many quilts and it just looks great and that's what we're gonna use. The Wild Jelly Rolls quilt is all done. It's a nice throw size, 54 by 62 inches. And I loved the fact that it used up a whole jelly roll, two and an eighth yards of background, and there was almost zero waste. Now remember, we traded out some of the yellow strips for that one print right here. And that is, We've got three of those sprinkled throughout the quilt, and I think it looks a lot better because we substituted that green for the yellow. The quilting looks great. It doesn't fight with the patchwork. I love all those feathery swirls. You can't see the quilting at all on the back, but the back is very interesting with those bursts of green. So this is Wild Jelly Rolls 3. The pattern includes Wild Jelly Rolls 4 also, and if you'd like to see that in a tutorial, let me know in the comments below. I do keep a list of requests of patterns, and I'm trying to get to them all, but as you quilters know, there's a lot of patterns and not that much time, but we'll eventually get to them all. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun making it, and if you have any questions about the pattern, leave it in the comments and I'll be sure to answer. Now at the end of each video, we do a giveaway. Today's giveaway is a great big quilt called It's Only Triangles. This is made with Laurel Birch fabrics. It's made from layer cake squares and it's a great big quilt. Big blocks, nice background, big bold pattern. It's very easy to enter the giveaway. All you do is click the link right below the video that says giveaway. Put in your name and your email address and we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world, so good luck. Now, if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.